am. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle. And if you are not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you for still being here. So today I have a list of five Hoya that I will never, ever buy again. And I'm gonna tell you what they are and why I will not be buying them. So if you guys know me, you know how much I love Hoya. I have arguably way too many to the point where I've like kind of chilled on buying <laughs> new Hoyas recently. Um, in my experience, there have been a few that I've had that I'm just not interested in ever having again. <laughs> so I did just do a list of like my top 10 plants that I will not be buying again in 2023. I can link that for you up here if you haven't seen it yet. And I didn't put any Hoya on that list. And, um... I thought that I would do a separate list of Hoya specific plants that I will not be buying. And um, I hope I hope that you enjoy it and please don't get mad at me because it's not that I don't like any of these Hoya. I bought them because I liked them, bought them more than once even, some of these. And uh, they just haven't loved me back or I just didn't love them while keeping them and I wouldn't buy them again. So the first one on my list is Hoya Sigillatus. I think that's how you say it anyway. Um, yeah, gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Love the variegation on this one. I'm gonna scoot over ooh, so I can put a picture on the screen for you uh, since I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I've had this plant on three separate occasions I got it right when it was like pretty new to the market and a lot of people weren't carrying it yet. So it was still like a rare Hoya and uh, I loved it. I thought it was really cute. It was doing well for a little while and it just started to slowly decline. Leaves were falling off of it. I never seemed to be able to get the watering on it down correctly. And um, yeah, it died like more than once even like propagations that I took just after a while just weren't happy anymore and that's probably my fault <laughs> for not watering them enough but I really cannot deal with this Hoya and now whenever I see it I just like associate it with all of the problems that I've had with it in the past and I just don't have it in me to do it again. I don't want to be disappointed by this Hoya for a fourth time. So I won't be buying one. The second one on my list is for the same reason, essentially, and that is the Hoya Linearis. I had this one, I started it out as just like a little baby cutting way back in the day, again, when these were still considered like rare and hard to find. And I was obsessed with it. I mean, who doesn't love those fuzzy, long leaves? It is so stinking cute the way that it trails. But let me tell you, I've had three of those now as well, and I've had nothing but problems. I don't know if mealybugs just really love that plant, and it becomes really difficult to treat it because it is such a sensitive plant that every time I would try to treat it, or clean it off, leaves would fall off, the plant would eventually just kind of like shrivel into nothing. And it got really sad, really, really sad. So I had a beautiful one that I started from a cutting. I acquired another cutting, put the two together into one beautiful plant and it died. And I was so sad about it. And then my friend Liz gave me cuttings from hers that she had rooted and I was like yay maybe this one will be healthier and happier because that one was just never really happy and uh no it died the same exact way that the first one did so <sighs> I'm just not gonna buy any more Hoya Linearis which is really sad because 
it's a gorgeous Hoya and I would love to have a big beautiful hanging basket of it but it's just not gonna happen it's not meant to be number three on my list is the Hoya Carnosa compacta Hindu rope so um love this one absolutely love it I still have my variegated one in the greenhouse that I'm trying to keep happy and alive and keep mealybugs off of because that is the issue that I have with this plant if you get bugs on this plant have fun trying to get them off all those little nooks and crannies the Hoyas oh my goodness the the Hoyas the mealybugs I'm fine the mealybugs love to get in those little crevices where you can't get them and lay their eggs in there and hatch a bunch of little gross little baby mealybugs and then it's just like you have an infestation on your hands and then it's just It's a nightmare because mealybugs, I've said time and time again, are impossible to get rid of unless you physically remove them from the plant. I have sprayed them countless times with so many different things and they keep on coming back. Unless I physically remove them from the plant, I have an issue with them coming back and coming back and coming back and more and more and more. <laughs> so. I found it really, really difficult to treat this one because you can't get to every little nook and cranny. And um, yeah, I just won't be buying any again because now when I look at them, I just see mealybugs everywhere and I cannot deal with that again. Oh, it's so heartbreaking, you guys. Like I tried, you watched me. If you saw that video, try to save it and I just ended up making it worse. <laughs> like I definitely, I made it worse. So there's, there's that. <laughs> Number four on my list of Hoyas that I'll never be buying again is the Hoya Carrii. So I do have this one. I have the green one and I have the, one of the variegated ones. I think it's inner variegated if I'm not mistaken. And they're cute. They're perfectly fine. I don't have any issues with them. They just, they grow really stupid, you guys. And their leaves come in all like, like weird. And it, the, the stems on them like are so thick too that I cannot get it on like a trellis or anything. So it just grows like straight up into the air. And um, I just keep on cutting it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I don't hate it by any means. I don't think it's ugly or anything like that. I mean, like, I bought them, right? But I just wouldn't buy another one. Like, if I see one in the store, I have no interest in it. Um, I was just telling David the only one I would get probably would be the splashy one, and it would just be to, like, just to have it and just to be able to, like, propagate it for you guys. But I don't love the Hoya Carrii. It's one of my least favorite Hoya varieties. Sorry. Okay, so the fifth and final Hoya on my list of Hoyas that I will not be buying again is the Hoya Croniana, like any of them. The silver one in particular seems to be really annoying. Um, it's just, it's difficult to propagate. It's not my favorite one to grow. It's like sometimes it's successful and other times it's not at all. It just completely rots and falls apart. And um, I don't love it. So I have one. I have a big Hoya Croniana Super Silver or whatever it's called. And like half of it has died back and I don't know why. Because I tr obviously treat the plant as a whole and like half of it just like decided to die and the other half was totally fine. So I don't really know what her issue is, but thankfully she wasn't super expensive and uh, there's still lots of plant left, but I just don't think I'm gonna be propagating her anymore until she like gets to a point where she needs to be cut. But um, in terms of like inventory and having that plant in stock, I just don't want to deal with it. Like, I really don't. It's just a disappointing plant 
to propagate uh, when it's like a 50% success rate. So I'm having to like lose half of the cuttings and that's irritating. And I don't want that for you guys either if you buy a cutting from me and it just like melts into nothing. So um, I'm more than happy to still like sell cuttings privately but I will likely not ever have these in my shop just because I don't want to deal with them. So that is my list of five Hoyas that I will not be buying this year or like ever again, probably don't hold me to it. <laughs> but these are the ones I could think of off the top of my head that I've just had some negative experiences with and I, uh, I don't love them. If you don't love a plant enough to have it in your collection, why in the heck and Bob do you have it in your collection? Don't let other people pressure you into thinking things about a plant. Like, don't let people pressure you into liking a plant that you don't like. We're allowed to have our own preferences when it comes to plants. I'm allowed to like plants that you don't like, and you're allowed to not like plants that I like. I mean, people think I'm crazy because I love ficus, and that's fine. I'll be the ficus lady. I'm gonna sit here and advocate for ficus all day long because I think they get a lot of hate for no reason. But that's not what this video is about. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. And uh, if you watched this whole entire video and you liked it, you know you should give it a thumbs up. I mean, you watched the whole thing, you obviously liked it. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. There's a join button down there if you wanna be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky perks. Lots of fun stuff going on, trying to come up with even more things for my plant fam members this year. So uh, let me know what you wanna see. And uh, there's also a super thanks button. If you want to super thanks me and donate a few dollars to my channel, everything helps. Everything is appreciated. I literally cannot do this without you guys. And uh, I love you. So I hope I see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.